In this session, we are going to discuss graph traversal technique. Um, in the last session, we had talked about the graph introduction, and then we looked at the basic terminology that is related to a graph, and uh, as well as how to represent a graph in a program using adjacency list and the adjacency matrix. As a follow-up, um, in this session, we are going to look at how to traverse through a graph. And uh, this problem here is the so-called graph traversal problem. And mainly, the goal here is to visit all the nodes, or what we call as vertex, in a connected graph. So how can we visit all of these nodes um, in order to, let us say, solve a particular graph-based problem. There are two popular al algorithms known as depth-first and breadth-first search. So one important application of such a graph traversal is to detect cycles in a graph. So as you may um, recall from our earlier discussions, if we have a graph like this shown here, then there is no cycle, and it is also a tree because it doesn't have a cycle or a circuit, and it doesn't have a self-loop either. But if we would connect these two nodes, as we had connected uh, in this graph, then it becomes a cycle. So by doing a graph, graph traversal, one can detect if there is a cycle or not, right? And also, um, if we assume that we are talking about the Facebook friend list, and if this particular graph that we have here um, is a Facebook friend list, then we could go and traverse this graph so as to find all the friends in that particular connection, right? So graph traversal is very popular so as to make sure that we can um, solve any graph-based problem by traversing through the graph. And uh, in this discussion, we are going to mainly look at the depth-first search traversal. We will first understand through an example how this traversal works. And then later, we are going to um, look at the um, detection of cycle using graph traversal. Um, and then in the subsequent uh, lectures, we are going to talk about breadth first search uh, to move forward, okay? So let's get started. Let us look at one example of DFS. So let's say that we are given with this graph, which is undirected. And then we want to traverse the graph from the node with the value zero, right? So we could traverse through this graph in, in a random order, but really we are looking at a more standardized way so as to make sure that the graph traversal is, is standardized, right? So DFS um, is simply going to use a stack data structure. And that's important for us to understand that DFS would use a stack data structure whereas a BFS, also known as breadth first search, which we will talk uh, in the next lecture, will use a queue data structure. So here you can see that there is a stack, and then in a stack, we often do a push and pop, right? So we do a push, pop, and peak. If you recall, peak would simply return the top element, whereas pop would remove the element. So here we are pushing the um, node that is of interest here zero, and we also maintain a separate array here called visited array. So which means then these are the um, nodes that are visited, and the final result would be in this particular array. So we had uh, pushed zero into the stack and made a zero as visited. And then we look at the neighbor of zero, 
So the neighbor of zero would be the nodes that are connected to zero. Because this is an undirected graph, we could simply look at all the neighbors. So you have one, three as the two neighbors here. So I'm going to mark down the neighbors here. For zero, there are two neighbors, one and three. And in any order, we can insert them into the stack, right? So for zero, we had one and three. Then you can choose one or you can choose three, right? So here we will um, choose one. So I'm going to insert one here into the stack. And then I um, add that to my result array, make it visited. And then now I am in one, I look at the neighbor, I have two, three, and five, and then also six, right? So there are several neighbor here. So I will simply pick one of them. I'm going to pick three, and then I make that visited, and I add it to that result, result array. So now I'm in three, then I have the neighbor four, two, zero, and one. Because 0 and 1 is already visited, as you can see in my uh, result array here, um, so 0 and 1 are visited, so we cannot add that again because it's already visited, right? So we will simply disregard 0 and 1 um, and take that out of the picture. And then all we have is 2 and 4. So let's say we add 2, right? So I'm going to add 2 and then add two to this result array, make it visited. Um, <clears throat> so now you can see that zero, one, three, two, we're all visited, right? And then now we are in two, and we look at the neighbors of two. So one, five, three, four, right? So really one is already visited, three is visited. So we add four, let us say. I have the option to add four or five. So I simply add four, I pick four, and then I add four and uh, add four to the result array and as well as to the stack. And you can see now I would simply disregard zero, one, three, um, two and four. And now I am in four. So I look at the neighbor of four, which is six and three, and then you have two, two and three already visited. So six would be now added. So we add six and then we are going to make six visited. So again, let's uh, remove zero, one, three, two, four, six. And then you look at the neighbor of six. So you got one, four, both of them are visited. So if you have, if you run into an issue like this, where there are no more neighbors which are unvisited, then you simply remove that from the stack. So we pop it off from the stack, and then we have four as the next element, and you look at four. Four has a neighbor three, two, six. All of them are visited. So four. Let me scratch all these here. So four would be removed from the stack. And then you go to two. When you go to two, you look at two, two's neighbors. Five, one, three, four. And then five is the only guy that is unvisited. So we add that five, we push it to the stack. We add it to the result array. And then later we are going to, at that point, we um, explore five and five's neighbor are one and two and both of them are apparently visited so you get five out of the way and then you go back to two and you look two's neighbors three one four so on so it's all visited so you remove two and then you do the same process again right so you get rid of two and then you're going to get rid of three then you're going to get rid of one, and then finally zero, right? So if you look at uh, zero, when you reach zero, the neighbors were three and one, we had already visited them, right? Because we visited them, we just simply pop it off from the stack. And when the stack is empty, that's when you know 
um, so here you're you're still like going and uh, popping off, and uh, you reach a stage where the stack is empty, and when it's empty, you know that you had visited all the vertices, right? You had visited all the vertices. One thing to keep in mind is when we talk about DFS using this algorithm, you can generate um, several order for the DFS traversal. So if you would look at 0, 1, 3, instead of opting for 1, I could have opted for 2, right? So then my um, sequencing would start like this, 0, 3, and then instead of uh, 2, if I opted for 4, then I get 0, 3, 4, right? So in other words, there can be multiple, multiple traversal order for the DFS, right, based on all these things, okay? So with that understanding, let us uh, review the pseudocode here for our algorithm. So the input here is a graph, uh, either a directed or undirected graph, and then you have uh, vertex u which we are trying to visit initially. Um, and then the output would be the traversal order. So first step is to create a stack. Then we mark u as visited. We are adding it to the result array. And then we push u to that stack. And then we run a while loop. Um, we are going to do a peak of s and uh, get v, which is the um, the top element of that stack, and then we check its neighbors. If there are an unvisited neighbor, and let's say that is W, then you add that um, to the result array and make it visited, and you're also pushing it back into the stack. Um, if you don't find any neighbor that is unvisited, then you simply pop that out of the stack. Right? And you continue that same step again and again till the stack is empty, right? Till the stack is empty. And keep in mind, we are only choosing one of the unvisited neighbor. If there are multiple unvisited neighbor, we are choosing only one, um, one out of it, right? So um, one question then is in terms of the complexity, if we go back to this graph here, um, so the complexity here is simply all the vertices, the size of uh, the vertices set, capital V, and then the size of the edges, capital E, right? So that's the time complexity. You think about it here, for all vertices, starting from zero, we are going to go and visit all the vertices, right? And all the vertices here are going to be visited by this algorithm. And that's, that's the time taken for capital V. And also, we are going to look at, for, e, for all the vertices combined, we are going to look at all the edges, right? And this is when we are looking for the neighbors. So the algorithm clearly was looking for the neighbor. Let's go back to the algorithm. So here you could see, right here, we are checking for the neighbor in this particular step, in this if condition. And this is going to run the size of E for all vertices V, right? So then the combination would be um, V plus E, where V is the number of vertices and capital E is the number of edges. So really, we are running, running this algorithm um, for all vertices and then for all the edges, right? And uh, we are not doing this here, right? So V times E, we are not doing this in a DFS. And why is it? Because we are not visiting all the edges for all the vertex, right? So that doesn't um, you know, really make sense. So in other words, if we go back to this, uh, to this um, graph, if we pick up zero, let's say I pick zero as the, um, zero as the node, 
Am I visiting all the word all the edges in that graph for zero? No, I'm only visiting two, right? I'm only checking for two. And that's the same thing with one here. I will only check a zero, two, five, three, um, which is um, I have four um, such edges, right? So that's the point here is that we are not going to do V times E. We are simply doing a V plus E, which is for all vertices combined, we are going to check all the edges. Um, so that's why the time complexity is linear um, for this algorithm. It's still big of V plus E. If we assume that uh, there is number of uh, the vertices, number of vertices, capital V, is uh, n, then simply um, if we assume that the e is n as well, then it's order of n plus n, which is order of 2n, then it can be approximated as order of n, which is then linear, right? But then it is always recommended to um, represent the time complexity using v and e so thereby it's order of v plus e. So the other question here is how do we detect a cycle in a graph using DFS? Um, so the simple um, solution to that is simply by applying a DFS traversal. If we find a node that is already in the slack, in the stack, then there is a cycle, right? So if you would recall from our um, example earlier, um, because we had a cycle here, right? So um, when we are trying to look at the neighbor for one, which was uh, two, three, and five, and then zero, if we already have this zero, three, two, or five in the stack, then we know that there is a cycle. Right? Why? Because there can be multiple paths, right? If there is multiple paths um, from zero or any four, there are multiple paths between any four, then there is going to be a cycle. Right? So simply we check the DF, um, the stack um, to see if there was an entry in the stack already then that is going to tell us there was a cycle, right? So we'll pick an example. Let's pick this example where we have no cycle, right? So this is actually a tree, right? So this is a tree, um, which is a specialized graph. And let's say we are traversing this graph from the node zero. So we add zero to the stack and we make it visited. We look at the neighbor one and three and let's say we decide we want to push one, we make one as visited, then the neighbor of one is two, and two would be um, pushed into the stack, and two now would be uh, visited. So you could see at any point of time, I don't have these elements that I'm adding uh, to the result array in the stack, right? So when I'm adding two, two was not there in the stack, Two was only added when we had made that visited, right? So that's the idea here, is that we keep, uh, we keep adding the element, and then when we um, get to two, um, then we would need to pop out two, because there's no more neighbor of two. There's only one neighbor of one, right? So, uh, which we had already visited. So we are looking for unvisited neighbors right, unvisited neighbor. And then we come back to one, and now when you're in one, again, you don't have any unvisited neighbor, you pop it off, then you go to zero, and zero has an unvisited neighbor in three, so we push three, and we add that to the result array, then you're going to add four, push four, add that to result array, then later, there's no more neighbor, so 4 would be taken out, 3 would be taken out, 0 would be taken out, and the stack would be eventually empty, and that's when we, we come up with our final traversal. 
So the point here is that at any point of time, we had um, the neighbor never in the stack, right? So the, the node that we are trying to add to the result array that was never inside the stack. Um, so what if we have this connection right here, two to four? Then you would find things to be a little bit different. So you would start from zero, then let's say you go to one, then you go to two, then you go to four, right? All right, so now you back out a little bit. Once you um, do zero, one, two, four, you bought back out and then go back to two. Um, four would be removed, two would be removed, one would be removed from the stack. And then you're going to add three. So you're simply adding three at that stage, right? And then three to four. Keep in mind, three, you're trying to go to four. And four was already um, in the stack, right? So we had visited that once. And this is why we say that this is a cycle, right? So every time, you know, you have a particular entry, um, So um, we will do a tryout one today um, to practice this DFS traversal technique. So please go through this graph. This time we are taking a directed graph. And we are using this directed graph to come up with the graph traversal. So um, when you are looking for a neighbor, we are lo looking for the neighbor based on the directed connection, which is the arrows, right? So, for example, um, if we pick um, <coughs> C's neighbor or E's neighbor, E's neighbor are going to be B and I, right? And, uh, or I should say H and I, right? H and I are going to be the neighbor for E. So, um, so please try this out and post your solution in Slack. As a next step, we would review BFS. And then we are going to talk about Dijkstra's algorithm and then uh, minimum spanning trees after that, okay? Um, also, if you have not done so already, I recommend that you would go back to Sedgwick 4.1 and 4.2 and do the reading assignment. And if there are any questions,